All right, guys. The name of this sermon is going to be called Cucumbered. Cucumbered. Uh, real quick, uh, as you can probably see if you're watching this on video, I'm wearing my goofy looking red and white flowery Hawaiian styled uh, shorts, <laughs> swimming shorts, uh, even though I don't know how to swim, but, uh, <laughs> but they're very comfortable. And I'm wearing this in this sermon as a prop, really, because it's going to help me make a point. You know, when you think of shorts like this, you think of people sitting out on the beach, right? Like maybe they're in Hawaii or something or whatever. Well, I'm wearing these to represent relaxation, relaxing, because that's what this sermon is about. And some of you may be thinking, well, at a time like this, how can so many people relax we shouldn't be relaxing right now we should be busy being the best Christians we can be with all the disasters that are going around and I get it and for some people yeah you're right this is an excellent time with all the things going on right now in the world to really go out and help people and serve people and I get that but I really feel like somebody or some people need to hear this and this message is about simply put saying that there are some of you right now who you know you know your focus should be on resting but instead of staying well rested so that your body can go through a process of healing you are concerned about the opinions of others you're concerned about people calling you lazy you're concerned about people trying to say that you of all people should be on the front lines being busy trying to help folks why are you not out there helping but you know whether it be because god has has revealed to you that you need to be resting so that you so that your health can recover or whether it be your own common sense telling you, hey, your body is out of whack right now. Your health is declining. Your health is deteriorating. And if you don't sit down somewhere and rest and take care of yourself first, you are not going to be able to help everybody else. If you're running on empty, you yourself being a vessel if your vessel is empty if your cup runneth dry your cup cannot runneth over into everybody else you cannot properly pour into everybody else when you're empty when you're running on e if you're a gas tank on e you cannot properly pour into others without breaking yourself down and draining yourself even worse than you're already drained so this sermon is confirmation to some folks that I already know they need to sit down, they need to rest, but you've got the concerns of what other people are thinking and what other people are saying about you on your mind, and I'm here to relieve you of those concerns, of those worries, of those burdens. This is not the time to get caught up in the opinions of man. You need to do what you know you need to do for yourself. And no, you're not being selfish. You've got to take care of yourself to properly take care of others, especially in the long haul, in the long run. So I'm just going to jump right into this. We're going to be in Luke chapter 5 and chapter 10. Simply that. And I've been in Luke. It seems like I've been in Luke probably every sermon that I've done this month, I think. Because this will be, I think, what, sermon number five? And I think this has been like the fifth sermon I've been in Luke on, at least at some point in the sermon. That's interesting. But anyway, moving on. So Luke chapter five, verse 29. If you're there now, uh, let's let's look at this. Not a whole lot of scripture to look at. Pretty short sermon. Luke chapter 5 verse 29 says this. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. 
and there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them but their scribes and pharisees murmured against his disciples saying why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners and jesus answering said unto them they that are whole need not a physician but they that are sick so we see jesus he's sitting down with publicans he's sitting down with with folks that that the scribes and pharisees deem as sinners he's sitting down with them they're eating they're relaxing taking care of themselves a uh, relaxing eating you know nourishing their bodies taking care of themselves but of course as always the scribes and pharisees have something to say and they got to ask their questions and nitpick about every little thing that jesus and his disciples do and they question this right here and jesus said unto them listen they that are whole they that are well they that are healthy they don't need a physician but they that are sick need a physician they that are not whole and not well they are the ones that need me and sure enough here I am doing what I do best he's saying listen even though I'm sitting here eating relaxing and that's all you see is me sitting here eating with sinners and publicans I'm actually on a mission right now. I'm actually doing what I'm supposed to be doing right now at this moment. I'm taking care of those that need the great physician. That's the Lord we serve, Jesus. The Lord that we serve is the great physician, the great I am. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last. None greater than he so he's saying these folks they're the ones that need the healing touch they need the healer they need me that's why i'm here that's why i'm doing what i'm doing i'm not having them up jumping around and doing all kinds of stuff because that's not what's necessary right now at this particular moment in time not for them now for others that are well so be it they can go and do what they got to do but with these folks right here, I'm tending to them right now. And part of me tending to them is having me sit them down, let them rest, let them eat. So with that said, let me say this. There are many of us as Christians, we're looking at what's going on right now in the news with the coronavirus, COVID-19. We see that there are a lot of people going out they've got food banks and food drives and people are going and delivering food to different homes where people don't have much food in the fridge or don't have anything at all you know they're making sure folks have got food on the table and clothes on their backs and that they have shelter people are making sure that, that they can help people financially in any way they can if they're out of work if they've been laid off you know if they need gas money to get to and fro if they need some help with bills or with rent because you've got some tenants out there that say they don't care uh, what's going on with your job they still want their rent and you know it's a lot of things going on with a lot of people and a lot of people are in need of help and you've got a lot of Christians out there that are going out of their way they're saying hey it's time for me to step up to the plate and to be that Christian I need to be the one that wants to show hospitality that wants to show the love of Jesus that wants to go out and help people make sure that folks are fed making sure that folks are taken care of making sure that folks are all right and that is great that is wonderful but there are those of you right now who you are going through some things yourself. You're going through a crisis yourself, but it's within. And so since it's within, since it's health issues, since you are tired and wore out and broke down and busted and disgusted, 
you need to rest and there are going to be some folks that are going to question your Christianity right now because it listen they're going to try to make it seem like you're being selfish because you're taking a little bit more care of yourself right now than everybody else up and down the street and it's not that you're selfish you just understand that right now you've got to take care of yourself because you are not well that doesn't make you any less of a christian because you understand that you are the living temple of god and you've got to take care of your temple and there's nothing wrong with that you are taking care of your one of your main obligations right now it is okay so you're going to have people that are going to criticize you just like the Pharisees did when they criticized Jesus and his disciples. And so you got to understand not only will they look down on you as a Christian the way they look down at the disciples, but if you are someone who you are in a position of leadership out there the same way Jesus was, they're going to really look at you funny the way they really looked at Jesus funny. They're going to say, well, you're a preacher, you're a minister, you're a teacher, you're a this, you're a that, you're this, that, and the other. You got this title, you got this position. Why are you laid up in the hospital? Why are you not helping others that are in the hospital? And they'll completely ignore the fact that clearly something's wrong with you. But they will expect you to go and jump and hop and skip and be out of breath and tired and bent over, can't breathe. Somebody got to come do CPR on you just because you are who you are. Well, even though you are who you are and you've got your title and your position and this, that, and the other, it doesn't mean you've got to be a superhero all the time. It doesn't mean you've got to go find a cape to put on and wear all the time. At the end of the day, you're still a human. You may be a man of God. You may be a woman of God. But at the end of the day, you are still human. You are still not God. You may be of God, but you're not God and you can't do everything all the time the way God can it's time for some of us instead of trying to step up to the plate it's time for us to humble ourselves drop the pride and sit down somewhere and be okay with the fact that we've got to take care of ourselves that we cannot always fix everybody else all the time without first dealing with ourselves and be okay with the fact that some folks are going to talk about us and look at us crazy and look upside our head crazy and give us the side eye because they think we should be out hopping and skipping and jumping and doing this that and the other Do you understand? Jesus is saying, listen, there's a time and place for everything. And there are some folks that it's their time to do what they got to do. But there are some who are not well. They need a physician right now. And this includes Christians. Some of these folks are Christians. Some of these people are in places of leadership inside and outside of the church. And it's okay if they take some time to make sure that they themselves are well. Let them sit down. Let them get in my presence. Let them spend some time with me. Let them recuperate and get themselves together before they go out here trying to tackle some stuff. It's okay. It's okay. Yes, there's 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 this virus going around. Matter of fact, <clears throat> I stay not too far from a town that just last month got hit by a tornado pretty bad. And so there have been a lot of people that have gone out of their way to, to volunteer their time to help out down that way. That's great. That is a great work. Woo! Yeah, right? But check this out. If you got to recover, if you got to sit down somewhere, if you're weak, if you're tired, if you're feeble, if you are broke down, if your health is bad, if you're sick, if you're coughing, if you're sneezing, if you've got lung issues and can't breathe, it is what it is. Sit down. It is what it is. It doesn't make you less of a Christian because you had to focus on 
your healing instead of focusing on everybody else's healing. It's okay to make sure you got something to eat so you can live for a moment without it being spending your whole day delivering stuff to everybody else. It's okay. It's okay that sometimes you have to take care of yourself. It's understandable. All right. I'll take you to the last place here and we'll wrap this up. Luke chapter 10. It says this. Now it came to pass, verse 38, sorry, verse 38, chapter 10, verse 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. So we see Mary and Martha here, right? It says this, but Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Mary and Martha, they both have good intentions. Here's Jesus in their midst. Martha is busy serving, serving, making sure everything is good with Jesus, making sure that everything is good with everybody in the house, making sure everything is all right and everything is in place. She's busy. She's doing a work for the Lord. She's doing good. But, <sighs> but even though she's doing good, even though she's doing the Christian thing. Mary. Mary has chosen. That good part. Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus. Relaxed. Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus. Relaxed. Not preaching not jumping up and down, not hopping, skipping, not even assisting her sister Martha. She has sat down somewhere. <laughs> She's spending time with the healer, with the physician. And Martha doesn't seem to understand why. Why is Mary not helping me? She talks to Jesus tell her to help me can she not see can you not see that I am busy I'm doing a good thing I'm doing a good work but Jesus has to explain to her listen you are careful and troubled about many things you're worried about all these things and you're really just stressing yourself out when in reality I just want you to sit down and relax and hear from me chill out I appreciate what you're doing but but chill out you've done some things and you'll have time to, in the future to do more things but can you sit down for a moment you don't have to wear yourself out to prove that you care about me, that you love me, that you're really a follower of me, that you're a Christian. It doesn't mean you have to be so busy all the time. That's not what it means. But just going back to verse 40 where it says, but Martha was cumbered about much serving. What does that word cumbered mean? It sounds a lot like cucumber, right? Which is why I named this sermon Q, like the letter Q, Q with a colon beside it, and then the word cumbered with a question mark. Q, cumbered, like that's the name of it, Q, cumbered. So why did I name this sermon Q, cumbered? Why did I write it out like that? Well, I'll show you. 
It says here again, Martha was cumbered about much serving. What does cumbered mean? I looked it up and it means things like this. Cumbered means things like to be distracted, to be overoccupied, to be too busy, to drag all around. So it says that she was cumbered about much serving. She was so busy and distracted and just overburdened with serving that she realized or failed to realize that it was a moment to just it was a moment to just sit in the presence of Jesus and relax that was it that was the goal that was the mission that 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 was supposed to be her mission for that particular moment in time That was it. That's all. Again, she wasn't in trouble. Jesus didn't yell at her, cuss her out, grab her and smack her around like they do in the cartoons. You know, Bugs Bunny puts on the gloves and slaps somebody and walks off. <laughs> and that's not, <laughs> that's not what it was. She just, she just had to be shown that it wasn't that serious. Some of you got to see that right now. I get this. Is, listen, this word is not for everybody. Yeah, it is important for a lot of Christians to step up and be Christians and really go out there and do a great work for the Lord and help everybody and show the love of Christ. Oh, yeah. But there are some of us. Listen, you got you got to you got to rest. You got to rest. You've got to take care of your health. So, Q, like I said, Q with a colon, and then cumbered. If you've ever read an interview, it makes sense to you. Maybe you picked up a magazine and you read an interview. The interviewer is, is, is interviewing some celebrity. And what they do is, to, to keep it short and simple, whenever it's showing you that the interview has asked that, that celebrity or that person a question, they'll put a Q, a capital Q with a colon beside it, and then it'll show you the question that they asked. And then they'll have under that a capital A with a colon, and it gives you the response, the celebrity's response. So that Q stands for question, and that A stands for answer. So Q colon, in other words, I'm asking you a question. It's like I'm interviewing right now, and I'm asking you a question, Q or question, and I'm saying cumbered. Right? With a question mark, cumbered. Are you cumbered? Are you overcumbered? Are you cumbered about much serving? That you can't realize that all you really need to do is rest. And spend time with the Lord. I'm asking you, are you cumbered? Cumbered with much serving. Q <laughs> cumbered. Play on words there. Q cumbered. Cucumbers are kind of like pickles, and well, some of you, you're in a pickle right now. See what I did there? The expression, I'm in a pickle. Anyway. <laughs> You're in a pickle right now. Why? Because you fail to realize that all you need to do at this particular moment in time is chill out. Drop all the unnecessary weight, baggage, everything that's burdening you, things that you have no control over. Take a deep breath, chill out, sit down, relax, and just focus on the Lord. You know, I talked uh, not too long ago in a sermon about how this this virus is invoking the spirit of fear in a lot of people. Fear is just having its way, but not only is it causing fear in people, I'm starting to see now that it's causing distraction in a lot of people. So some people are overly uh, uh, afraid. They're full of fear, but some people, they are cumbered. They are greatly cumbered in this hour. So either we're paralyzed by fear 
or we're dragging everything around because we're so cumbered. It, and I'll, I'll wrap this up by saying this. You know, as I'm ministering this word, it kind of makes me think of a video game I used to play on the Xbox called Oblivion. It was part of the Elder Scrolls series. It was called Oblivion. And I remember, you know, you would create your character and, you know, you would go on this adventure and, and do whatever. And as you were out doing different things, doing different missions and quests or just doing whatever you want to do in this game, you could pick up stuff, right? And you could keep it in, in what was called your inventory. You could keep things and you could sell things. And, and whenever you didn't want something anymore, you could just drop it right, like right where it was. And, you, and it was funny because you would just see that item appear. Like if you chose to drop it, you would see it appear and you would see it just fall. Like hit the floor. And you could look down at it and see, hey, you know, I'm not carrying this anymore. Well, it would the, the game would keep up with all that you had in your inventory. But the thing is, you couldn't just carry everything because over a certain period of time as you collected stuff in your inventory... It will start to weigh you down. And so when it got to a certain point, a certain amount of stuff that you had, your character would just stop. Like no matter if you tried to make it go in a certain direction, it would get to a point where it couldn't move. And it would say at the top of the screen, you are overcumbered. And it was just its way of saying, you're too way down. You, you've got too much stuff. you got to let go of something if you want to start moving again. So you would either have to like, you know, drop some stuff or, you know, try to sell something or whatever. But as soon as you drop something, like I said, you would see that item appear and it would just fall. And, and when you had let go of enough to start moving, sure enough, you could, you know, you could start moving and you could start running again. Right? And so there were different things, different characteristics and traits and stuff that you could build up throughout the game right and so one of the things was like your strength and your endurance and stuff like that so as you built those things up over time through different things that you went through you could you could build up your strength and endurance to where you could carry more stuff but even then there will still be a limit it's just that the limit would be a higher limit you know you could carry a little bit more than you used to but you still couldn't over encumber yourself or else you'd have to go back to dropping stuff and that's that's what it's like so many of us are so over cumbered we're just you know what I mean we're, we're stressed we're freaking out we're worried about all this stuff if we're not paralyzed and standing still due to fear we are standing still because we're so cumbered or over encumbered with all this stuff with all this baggage that's unnecessary it's making us tired weary stressed fragile we're no good we're no good of use to the Lord. We want to do something for the Lord, but we can't because we are stuck. We are so overcumbered. We are so paralyzed with fear. We have got to rest and give our fears and anxieties and stresses over to the Lord. He's waiting. Will you sit down? Q. Cumbered? Yeah. Answer A. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'll pray us out of here. Heavenly Father, I thank you for another time to minister another word. I pray that those who need rest would seek you, Lord, that, that you would just give them a supernatural rest, Lord. Your word lets us know that if, if we come to you, you will give us rest. And I pray that you would give us sweet sleep, sweet rest, Lord, that you would cause us to lay down in green pastures beside still waters. Lord, I pray that you would just 
breathe your breath of life into us, Lord. Give us a fresh wind, a second wind, Lord. Give us our second wind so that we can be renewed and refreshed and revived and, and rejuvenated and regenerated, Lord. Help us be able to just make it through right now in these tough times, Lord. Help us to be whole and healthy and well so that when the time is right, we can get up from sitting down and resting and we can go out into the world, we can live our best lives and we can help others to the fullest because when we are full and our cup runs over, that's when we can most effectively pour into others and help others and let our light shine. Heavenly Father, I give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.